All right, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be overclocking a 7600K today, but I thought we should just start with a little disclaimer. Um, I'm not responsible if you break your computer parts, if your computer just happens to catch on fire. Do not attempt these settings at home. Do not break your shit. Hey, welcome back to the Tech Center YouTube. Thanks for checking out another video. Uh, before we get going, I just want to do a couple quick shout outs. Shout out to my man James from Two Hills, Alberta. James supplied us with the radiator, keeping this loop nice and cool at an ultra low price of $20. So thank you, James. And also big shout out to my man, Justin from Ardrossan, Alberta. My man Justin supplied us with the 7600K for a pretty sweet deal. So thank you, my man, Justin. Also, big shout out to my man, Lawrence Tim, also known as Jumper118, also known as Yo Mr. Jumper Man. Jumper is a big supporter. He watches all my videos and he comments on all of them. So big shout out to my man, Jumper. He has a great YouTube channel as well, so I will link his channel in the description below. Go check that out for some cool AMD Ryzen, AMD Threadripper, and uh, liquid nitrogen overclocking. So, Jumper's got it going on. Here's a quick look at the test setup today. We got the ASRock Z170M OC formula. Inside that is the 7600K. And our memory is the G-Skill Trident Z memory. I'm not anticipating any records today. We're only sitting at roughly minus three outside, so it's not that cold, it's not that crazy. But let's see what this little i5 can do. So let's get you guys set up. All right, she's not perfect, but uh Good enough for the girls I go with, I guess. Okay, so let's see what's going on here to begin with. Um, we're basically loaded into Windows with stock settings. And we'll just start this Cinebench. Let's see what we get out of the gate. Let's observe our temperatures. Let's observe our core frequency, which is... 4.2 gigahertz on all cores, 1.056 is our voltage, and our max temperature is 17C. So this is out of the box, i5 7600K, completely stock, 4.2 gigahertz on all cores, uh, reaching a max temp of 17C on this loop. Now this is a pretty golden chip, unfortunately it's not too cold out today so I really don't know what type of uh, overclocks we're going to get out of it. I'm not going to go too in detail on the BIOS itself but uh, we'll go in there, we'll set our overclocks, um, I'll show you kind of how I've got mine set up and uh, that's basically it. Don't try any of these settings on your own time, okay? All right, so we've got our baseline score of 692 out of the box from the factory. Load setup defaults and away you go. So let's go ahead and just restart this, go into the BIOS. And um, I love this board. It's a really good board overall. I highly recommend it. I have zero complaints about it. It takes a little long to post when you're trying to run extremely fast memory, but that's basically it. Other than that, it's a good board. So now we are in the BIOS, or as the cool kids say, let's get lit with the UEFI. I don't know. Okay, so let's just go ahead and load our, our profile. <clears throat> profile is loaded. So basically, just see what's going on we've got our 
CPU and our cache both set for 5.1 gigahertz. We've got uh, speed step disabled for now, speed shift disabled and turbo boost enabled. Our memory is setting at 4000 megahertz and these are basically the primary and some of the sub timings that we've got set up. And let's have a look at some of our voltages. So our V core set for 1.52 volts, load line calibration for level one and DRAM 1.975 and 1.35 on the IA and sorry, IO and SA voltages. So let's go ahead and boot into Windows here at 5.1 gigahertz. See if we can run that Cinebench and uh, start pushing it in the Windows environment. So far the 7700K and 7600K have been a real treat to overclock. Um, the two chips that I had anyways, I've been really impressed with these KB Lake chips in terms of how well they clock. So kill our AI sweet errors. So we'll bring up the formula drive so we can observe our temperatures and just get set up here. So, so we're back into the operating system, 5.1 gigahertz. <clears throat> and we'll get CPU to load up some CPU Z. All right, so 5.1 gigahertz on the core, 1.52 volts, memory is at 4,000 megahertz, and our cache is at 5.1 gigahertz as well. So let's uh, run the benchmark and observe our temperature. So let's see what happens here. We're going from 4.2 gigahertz, the score is 694, and to 5.1 gigahertz. So. Not quite one gigahertz on the overclock, but 900 megahertz. Now, really, you don't have to, you know, hit these types of speeds for your normal day-to-day -day gaming or whenever you watch your yoga videos or whatever it is you're doing. Um, you know, if you can get your chip to about 4.8, it's going to run every bit as good as this for a, a daily overclock, so... These are just little overclocks we like to do for fun, fun in the sun, or fun in minus 30 in our case. So we went from 694 to 861 at 5.1. That's pretty decent, uh, 161 points or so. So I did not have a look at our temperature there, so let's uh, go ahead and kick her up to 5.2. On the benchmark again so we're sitting pretty here at 5.2 on the CPU and we are observing a max temp of about 64 67 C so we're all good in the hood when it comes to our water cooling loop right now everything's running nice and cool at 1.52 volts we are not observing temps above 70 C so Things are running excellent. Uh, this chip, yes, I did delit it. it. This particular chip was running really hot when I got it. At these particular voltages, this chip was hitting like 97C, and it was colder outside. So, so at 5.2, we scored 878. So that's pretty decent. So, logically, let's go for 5.3 next. Let's see if she'll do 5.3. So we're sitting at 5.3. And let's run it. So away she goes. 5.3 gigahertz, 7600K just doing its thing. 1.52 volts. Temps are looking really, really good. And yeah, this board just, it rocks it. It does everything you want it to do. Um, the ASRock Formula Drive software is excellent for overclocking. 
and uh, it's not bloated, it's nice, it's simple, it's clean, it's easy. It's just a really, really great experience when it comes to overclocking. As soon as I dr throw the dry ice pot on here, I have such a good time overclocking this platform. Just works really good. So, <clears throat> 895 at 5.3 gigahertz. So that's pretty decent. So let's go for 5.4. 5.4. All right. Can can it do 5.4? That's the question. Can this chip do 5.4 gigahertz? It's only minus 3 degrees outside. So it's not that crazy cold. Not cold at all actually. But so far she seems to be happy, seems to be running it. So I did put this particular chip on dry ice cooling and this particular chip was able to hit 5.8 gigahertz on Cinebench R15 and <clears throat> I do believe I was able to validate the chip at about 6 gigahertz on dry ice cooling so it's a pretty strong chip overall. Booyah! 5.4 gigahertz right there. 916 so we gained you know 224 points over our stock score let's go ahead and just put this in real-time priority right now and just see what um, how that improves the score as well just by changing that so we started at 916, nothing else has changed. 5.4 gigahertz, just set it for real time priority. So normally you're gonna score significantly better when you go to real time priority. So let's check that out and uh, see how we make out there. And then next we're going right for 5.5, but I don't think the chip will do it today. I think this chip uh, wants to be colder for 5.5 but we're gonna try it anyways we're probably just gonna crash and burn but that's what we do we ride till we die yeah 917 points so <clears throat> it didn't actually score that much higher all right guys let's do it 5.5 gigahertz Okay, we're probably just going to crash and burn here, so before that happens, just want to thanks it, thank everybody for watching this video. 5.5 gigahertz, she's not, she's probably not going to run. And uh, stay tuned for some more overclocking videos. And I left it in frickin' real-time priority, so this will not be good. This will not be good at all. I don't think it's going to run. I think it's just going to blue screen or black screen. Well, there you guys go. Blue screen. She's dead. All right. Well, thanks for checking out this video. Stay tuned. If you guys want to see some sub-zero overclocking, make sure to comment, like this video, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Peace!